Shalom, shalom. Word from the Lord. Now this one. This this one is a lot, so bear with me. But I'm trying to get through it. So I was watching the sister in Christ's testimony. And I thought to myself, wow, she's bold. Then I heard the voice of the Lord say, don't be afraid of your testimony, preach it. So, this is, this is before I even started school. I was sexually abused. I never told anybody at the time, you know, I didn't want no trouble. I was gay. That's what my friends were at the time. That's what I decided to be for the moment. Now, I had a hell dream. Now, I went to church back then. You know, I praised and worshiped and all of that, but I don't think I ever knew what heaven and hell was at that time. But um, I remember the night I went to my room and I laid down, and it might have been the fastest I ever went to sleep. Then I appeared in this place, and I seen myself, and I was on the floor, my hands over my face. I was burning up, but there was no fire. There was no fire around me. And I couldn't get up. It was just like whatever, whatever was weighing me down wouldn't allow me to, I didn't have any power. You know, I was just laying there, just being consumed. So it was like a camera, like a camera view. So then it went to the edge of this cliff that I was on. And the cliff that I was on was like, might sound funny, <laughs> but have you ever seen the uh, Lion King, like Pride Rock? It was like Pride Rock. It was like, in the end, it was wide. And then it was like the closer you got to the edge, it, the more narrow it became. So then I seen from the camera view on the edge. And then I seen down. Because the cliff was probably like, I don't even know how many feet it was. It was, it was high. But when I looked at, when I, when the camera looked down, it was, I seen a sea of fire. And I seen, I can't even tell you how many souls I seen. It was innumerable. Maybe thousands. Maybe more, but they don't know. It was all burning up, and they had this terror look on their face. I couldn't hear, I couldn't hear the scream, but I seen the look on their faces, and they were trying to, it's like they was trying to move, like trying to run across the, the room, but their feet was planted wherever, Wherever they were, they couldn't move from that spot, but they could move like their body left, right, forward and back. And, you know, they was just freaking out. And then the camera went from the right to the, all the way to the left. And then it went back to the middle and then I zoomed back out. And then that's when I woke up. And I felt, when I woke up, I was sweating. And I was burning up. And that dream probably lasts about 30 seconds, maybe even less than that. It really wasn't that long. And, you know, I felt this terror that I never felt before. 
and I didn't understand it, you know, I was trying to figure it out, and I just couldn't, then I went back to sleep, and then when I woke up, I didn't remember, I didn't remember the dream, I didn't remember the dream from then, and that was, I was five at the time, until maybe a year and a half, it's when like, I started getting flashbacks of it. You know, I would see fire and I didn't understand it. I was trying to figure it out. You know, I all, I knew what the dream was when I remembered it. But, you know, I was like, Lord, I don't, you know, understand this. I don't know what this, I don't know what that means. Why, why, would I, why would I be in hell, you know, at that age? I didn't understand. And, uh, you know, I wrestled with it and didn't get an answer, so I prayed, and I prayed to God to give me, you know, the revelation of it, and I told him I would preach it, and I went on a 21-day fast, and then that's when the Lord spoke to me, and he didn't tell me what it meant directly like speaking, speaking wise, but I felt it like in my spirit, I got the revelation and it was, you know, if I would have kept living that lifestyle that that's, that's where I would have went. So let's look at the scriptures though. Okay. This is the old Testament Genesis, Genesis 19. 24 and 25. Now, if you want the full context, we could read Genesis 18, 20, and then the whole 19. But Genesis 19, 24 says, Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities. All the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. Okay, so that's Genesis. And then let's go to let's go to Jude. Jude one seven. And Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. It's pretty self explanatory. The last one. Revelations twenty one eight. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars will have their part in the lake of in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death. Now, I know that sounds bad, but there's good news. Jesus died for all of our sins to be forgiven. But you got to accept them. You can't keep living a life of sin and expect to make it, just make it in heaven. You have to repent. You can't do anything that you want to do and expect God to just be okay with it. The wages of sin are death. Now, sin is disobedience. Just like breaking the law will equal 
jail time. So just look at it like that. You're breaking God's law when you sin. But he doesn't want us to sin. He doesn't want us to do wrong. Now we could justify our sin and say that it's not bad, but we don't really have the comprehension of how bad sin really is and what it does to your soul. It's whether you believe it or not. Everything that we do pertains to something spiritual. So when we do these things, we are killing ourselves spiritually. But God doesn't want that. He made a way out. But you got to choose the right way to go to the right place. So you got to repent. Hell is not a place that you want to be. It's not a joke. It's not a game. I don't say these things just to say them. <laughs> I do not want to say these things at all. But this is the truth. So... Gotta repent, you gotta change, you gotta change your mindset, you gotta change your ways. Can't keep knowing this. Well, y'all can't keep doing that. Can't keep sinning. The Lord don't want you to sin. The Lord doesn't want anyone to perish, but if we keep going on and sinning, that's what it's gonna lead to. Sin equals death. But faith in Christ Jesus, that's life, eternal life, eternal death. Gotta pick a side. We can't keep living in sin and saying that we love God. If you're disobedient to God, then God already, already shows his love for him. And I know it's hard. I know, you know, some people got real strong goals on the over their life. And, you know, it's hard to stop doing those things, but that's what Jesus is for. Jesus is here to heal us. Jesus is here to sanctify us. Jesus is here to save our souls. It shows the ways that we should go that we don't go. You don't have to do it on your own. You have to be born again. You have to be born of his spirit to inherit his kingdom. You know, we can't just get to heaven because we're doing something good. Or we think that we're good people. No one is good but God. But if you run to Jesus... He'll clean you up. For the word of God says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us all of all the unrighteousness. That's all he wants to do. He wants to purify, purify us of our unrighteousness. And all you got to do is follow him and accept him as Lord and try your best. And he'll do all the, all the work.